previously on Super Idols RPG. So it turns out that maybe there is a little more to Queen Bee that meets the eye. They've always been an unassuming kid, uncomfortable in the spotlight. And never mind that Allen has been struggling a bit with the whole gender thing as well, which makes people's criticism of their image hurt that much more. Yeah, like look at those look, look at those mo I taught you that move. You did it so perfect. I mean, I almost did. Yeah, I almost did no, it. No, don't don't cut yourself short. You did so good at it. I didn't, I didn't really think that much about how the industry works, like wearing shadow and it, I did I don't know enough about idols. The the company's like Crimson Signal or something like that. It sound it even sounds like kind of sinister and stuff. Hmm. She pulls out her cell phone and she just types Crimson Signal in like her notepad app just to look them up later. Hey there everyone and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I am your GM Aaron Cerise, and with me today are T. Hi there. And Luca. Hello. We have a slightly smaller session today, but we do also have uh, one other very special guest today. We have a writer, game designer, and GM of the very good podcast, The Talent Agency. It's the internet's very own queer android game show host, Nathan Blades. Why, hello, everybody. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hi, hi, hello. Hi, hello. Pleasure to be here. I'm yes. genuinely super excited to be on the show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> we have a fun little uh, smaller session that I think you will absolutely be perfect for. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I enjoy, uh, I, I, I already enjoy kind of like team superhero shenanigans. I enjoy magical girl shenanigans and I enjoy performance as an art shenanigans. So this is all, all mushed together into yeah. something I'm very, very Rolled down for. Rolled up into for. this big katamari of all the things. That <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I look forward to adding some uh, high tension drama and strife into your lives. <laughs> excellent, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Aaron from the Editing Bay here. Just wanted to cut in and say that Nathan actually has a brand new game that just came out this week. Are you a fan of ordinary people using flashy superpowers, transformation sequences, and emotional heart-to-hearts? Of course you are! Why else are you listening to this podcast? Well, what if I told you that you could bring all that anime energy into your own games with heartbeats in perfect sync? A micro RPG by Nathan Blades. Inspired by urban fantasy RPGs like The World Ends With You, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and Kingdom Hearts, you can fight otherworldly forces with a weapon summoned from your smartphone and indulge in a darker side of yourself for forbidden power. Drama, tension, excitement, ah! So yeah, <laughs> just wanted to get in a quick plug for that because it looks like a really fantastic little game. It's only about five pounds and it's available on Nathan's game page at sixofspades.itch.io, link in the description. And now, back to the episode. Um, and as for our uh, characters that we have been following, uh, Angie and Alan slash Queen Bee, Leading off from the end of the solo sessions last time, we find ourselves on Labor Day afternoon. Uh, Alan, you are just coming off the heels of your visit to Karen, which has you in surprisingly pleasant spirits, all things considered. And to further boost your mood, you have decided to treat yourself to some new nail polish. And you need to travel a decent ways back to get home anyway. So you've decided to make the trip worth it and stop in at one of your favorite malls, the Paradise Shopping Center. And Angie, after your heart-to-heart -heart with Kyle the other night, you're feeling a bit more refreshed today and also in the mood for some retail therapy. If nothing else gets accomplished over this long weekend, you are at the very least going to get yourself the best damn clipboard your modest allowance can buy. <laughs> and the Paradise Center just happens to have a high quality stationery store. More importantly, it's far away from wherever your parents are planning to be today. So that sounds like a pretty good option to you as well. 
It sure does. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the both of you find yourselves on your way to Paradise Center. And I guess I should ask Luca, is Alan going to stay Alan for this shopping trip, or are they transforming to Queen Bee at some point along the way? They, well, for the time being, they're not planning to transform. They just want to go in and uh, check out the place. They ah. don't want any undue attention. Okay, perfect. All right, so anyway, so as you head to the mall with the intention of heading for a makeup store, there's a nice little kiosk in there that you like called Phantom Cosmetics. Um, mm -hmm. Alan, you managed to catch a glimpse of Angie walking along the concourse not far ahead of you. What do you do? Oh dear, does she look, like, angry? Like, more than usual? Um, I think Angie looks determined. Hmm. So it's not like, I wouldn't say she looks scary or it, you know, if somebody interrupts her, she's going to snap at them. And I think you've probably known her well enough at this point to know when she looks angry versus when she's just her normal, it's her normal scowl, not her angry scowl, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm definitely not going to talk to her, but I'm going to keep an eye, see what she's doing. All right. Um, and Angie, are you pretty much heading straight for the stationery store? Or are there any other pit stops you're going to make first off? I think she wants to get the stationery shop out of the way. And it's her favorite. It's her favorite store. So she goes there quite often, actually. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the part time staff know her <laughs> because she's always actually when she does, she spends a lot of her allowance on stationery stuff. But uh, usually she's looking for sales. So that's that's where she's headed with very purposeful steps. Very good. Yeah. All right. So as it happens, both of the places that you're going are not too far away from each other. The Phantom Cosmetics kiosk is located just across the way from Swansong Stationery. And both of them happen to be sort of near the center of the shopping center. The, that, that, the center of the center, as it were. Uh, yes. Um, so I should actually mention something about the way the Paradise Center is laid out. Uh, you can see it in your map on Roll20, but for the folks listening at home, in the center of the mall, there is one big open area that all the stores in the mall kind of fan out around. This space is sometimes used for car shows, sometimes small conventions or other gatherings, but mostly it functions as a stage area. Cadence was, of course, one of the first major cities in the world that started catering to super idols after they became a thing. So, of course, a lot of Cadence's architecture is built around having areas where super idols can perform. It's, it's just really kind of hard to avoid in this city. The whole place is kind of just lousy with stages. And for this one, it seems there is a performer booked there for the afternoon with a big sign on stage reading, One day only live performance and meet and greet with zero degrees monday september 7th at 4 p.m it is currently about 3 45 p.m so the show has not started yet but you can see some tech people moving things around on the stage they're preparing equipment and safety barriers and such there's people gathering in the seating area already there's a lot of very excited looking people in the audience and you can see there is a curtained off area near the back of the stage where presumably the star of the show is getting ready. Ma, 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 so, I don't know if you'd pay much attention to that necessarily. It's a fairly normal occurrence in Cadence. But uh, what do you think y'all are doing at the moment? Uh, shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so you um, I'm, I probably stride into the store and I go right to the sales section to see if I can find um, a nicer clipboard than the, the dollar store one I had purchased previously because <laughs> um, my new soon-to-be rival had a very nice clipboard and she can't show me up i always have to have the best stationery oh absolutely so, yeah so she's in there and she's strode she strode is that the word yeah <laughs> right to that section of the store and she's contemplating the clipboards <laughs> Uh, and Alan, are you kind of like keeping an eye on Angie from there? Or are you kind of focused more on your own thing for right now? I think I took a quick look at the polishes and then realized that my get well soon gift for Karen set me back more than I thought. And 
I honestly cannot afford this. Oh, <laughs> oh no. So I think I just stalk Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> When in also, doubt, would that help uh, with my guilty condition? Oh yes, um, I probably. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say up front. Um, I'm afraid uh, marked from the last uh, from last session. Yes, no, I forgot to say up front. Uh, you can actually clear all your conditions after your oh, solo fantastic. sessions. <laughs> okay. So yeah, with the last peaceful look at the particularly nice dark gold polish, uh, I walk into Swan Song Stationery. Uh, so as you you kind of head in, looking fairly nonchalant, uh, Angie looking over the stationery. A- Angie is approached by one of the part-time staff who definitely knows her. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll call her we'll call her Lara. She walks over and gives her a wave, like, "Hey, girl, what's up?" <laughs> oh, hey, Lara. I am. I'm looking for a new clipboard. Say no more. We have the perfect deal for you today. Come with me. And she grabs you by the hand and and takes you over to the sort of clipboards and folders section uh, and gives sort of a sweeping hand motion towards a nice feature rack of some very sparkly gold folders and clipboards. Perfect. Ta-da! So if this were an anime, there would definitely be a part where her eyes were shining as she's looking at the clipboards. (laughs) <laughs> if this were an anime, that's definitely the kind of facial expression she has. Like, she's just so excited about stationery. <laughs> like the Steven <laughs> Universe star eyes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, something like that. And uh, there's so many different fancy kinds. And But she has a budget, so <laughs> she's definitely looking at the cheaper ones first. Right. But and- with determination. <laughs> right, and Lara catches you looking that way, and the the only uh, unfortunate thing about Lara is um, she is very much into her job, and in the sense that she is always trying to upsell you. So she catches you looking at the cheaper rack, and she's like, "Oh no, no, no! I I think you are much much more suited for the ones up here, don't you think? These ones have the these custom embossed patterns uh, straight from Paris. I think you you deserve Paris. only the best." You're right, Lara, but unfortunately, I can't afford the best, so I'm just going to look at these these ones, okay? But thank you. Thank Are you, you absolutely so much. sure we have layaway plans? I, I, oh, and she- I know, I know. <laughs> um, you can just uh, go over there, and uh, if I need your opinion, though, I know I can come to you at any time. Don't you worry. I, all right, but you definitely give me a call. You know where I am. And she taps her na- her name badge. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Bye. <laughs> and then she uh, <laughs> sighs a bit with relief yeah. after Lara walks um, away. <laughs> and who should happen to be in the vicinity? Uh, as as Lara turns around, the next person over <laughs> is a unassuming uh, young person in uh, in an oversized hoodie. So, Alan, she turns to you with a a big, pearly white smile and is, And how can I help you today? Uh, Can I interest you in our fountain pens? We are having a special buy five, get one free deal. Uh, No, thank you. Maybe I was just looking for some, some cards. Absolutely, I can help you with cards. We've got Labor Day specials today, so you can wish anyone in your family a happy Labor Day. And we've got these great sets of, like, 20, so you can give one to all your family members. And she's talking your ear off. Um, (laughs) Angie, you can definitely still hear her. So when I'm looking at Alan, Alan, how are you looking right now? Do you look uncomfortable, or are you listening with some interest? Or would you, like, It's does it seem like you just kind of want Lara to back off? I absolutely want Lara to back off, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I uh, I walk up to Lara, and I was like, Lara, hi. Hello, best customer. <laughs> hi. Um, do you have any silver and pink clipboards? Oh, I think I might have them in the back. Absolutely. Yes. L- let me go rush and get those right now. And she like dashes <laughs> towards the back stock room to find as many as she can. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and then I um I look at Alan and I just say, you might want to run if you're feeling that way. Uh, she's like that all the time. Just a little 
Uh, she just really loves her job, you know? And she's nice, but, you know, I don't think they even earn commission here, so I'm not sure. Um, anyway, you might want to buy the pen you were looking for and uh, get the hell out if that's what you want, because uh, she will not stop. Yeah, I, I don't have that big a family to need that many cards. Thank, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And she probably spins on her heel and goes back to looking at the clipboards. And I think she does find a nice one that's in her personal budget. So she's looking at that one very thoughtfully. And one of the more sympathetic cashiers kind of notices that you've got something and like rushes you over to, to get back to the counter before <laughs> Laura gets back. They know the deal. Yeah, um, I probably buy another set of gel pens that are also on, on sale. The pink is running out and I always have to have the whole new set, even if just one color runs out. That just seems to be how I roll. Of course. Oh my god. So I pick up one of those two and I'm quickly cashing out before Lara comes back. Alright. Uh, probably I'm gonna say you, you finish that up relatively quickly. Um, the both of you are probably in, a, in a quite a bit of a hurry to get out before Lara gets back. <laughs> so you find yourselves going out of the store more or less together at this point. Um, and you can see that uh, there's a little bit more activity going on on the stage nearby. The show seems like it's just about to start. Huh, who's, uh, who's playing today? Uh, and I'm looking around for the sign because I also, me as a player, forgot. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so yeah, you sorry see, about that. No worries. Uh, so you, the sign that you see says uh, zero degrees. Um, and you do sort of know who this person is. They're, they're an up-and-coming new... Uh, idol, but they've already got a rabid fan base, uh, so you definitely have heard the name around, even if you're not terribly familiar with who they are specifically. Okay, so probably came across some fan cams on the idol tube. For and... sure. Yes, okay. Oh, it's uh, Zero Degrees, a rookie, but with a passionate fan base following already. You can uh, hear on the kind of like PA in the background as the, the show starts the whoosh in hiss of like dry ice and uh, somebody uh, yelling uh, into kind of like a headset mic. Everybody freeze! And there is a almost one second length applause and then it stops abruptly. And if from wherever you are, you can kind of like peer over the side of this upper lip of the mall and see the stage area. Everybody is frozen in a pose simultaneously looking at the stage. On the stage is a young man uh, in their early 20s. They have a kind of like Dorian Electra meets Prince style aesthetic. They're wearing a oversized business shirt that has been tactically shredded along the uh, torso and the arms so it hangs longer than it would otherwise. And incredibly skin tight, rhinestoned ice skater like trousers as they kind of step out uh, catwalk style. Uh, you can hear in this frozen moment where everybody is immediately quiet the click, click, click of incredibly expensive shoes as they stop at the end of the stage and is like, thank you all for coming. I'm sure you already know who I am, but I am zero degrees. And it's so absolutely breathtaking to see you all here today. This first one, absolute zero, is for you in the third row. Hit it, everybody. and a kind of like um, 90s R&B New Jack Swing style beat kind of kicks in. Uh, think like Finesse by Bruno Mars as uh, they start uh, doing a dance routine. <laughs> and the crowd starts to go wild as you start up. <laughs> Insert post-production sound effects here. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a, I, I guess, uh, for for a short period of time, the animation budget increases just a couple notches. Oh, there's hella um, sakuga going on right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's this one particular kind of like pose where the the shirt kind of flaps up, and you get 
um, you get like a peak of abs. It's just a little bit too detailed. Like the animator had a fun time um, working on this this particular bit. Um, <laughs> They, they have the kind of non-threatening boy band style hair, but the, like, um, the, the sex appeal that gets the kind of, like, older crowd interested in them as a fan. That kind of vibe. <laughs> All right. And the, the two of you. How do you take this? Are you impressed? Or are you just kind of like, whatever, this happens all the time? <laughs> That's a pretty decent entrance. I mean, like... The way everybody around the stage stopped and froze for a small moment when uh, the guy came out. That was cool. <laughs> <But didn't you? laughs> that, that particular number comes to an end. And it says, oh, for those who don't know me, I am this city's newest solo and group act. You do not see anybody else on stage. How a group act, you say? Well... Get a load of this, and their like magical performer powers kick in. The temperature in the room drops significantly as uh, kind of starting to form out of the air, large crystals of ice clumping together until uh, they form two figures. Uh, and then he snaps his fingers, very Shiva Diamond Dust style, and they the detail on these like a very vague angular figures break away into two perfect replicas of uh, zero degrees and they go hello 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 <laughs> they can do their own three-part harmony mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. um angie is standing there looking kind of stunned um, she shivers because it's cold a little bit, and uh, she's still dressed for, it's prob- it was probably a hot September day, so she's wearing like a tank top and shorts. Last season, of course. And uh, yeah, and she's holding like her nice bag of uh, with her new stationery stuff, but also, you know, you can kind of tell that her mind is, the wheels are turning. And she's thinking of ideas and how she can incorporate stuff for <laughs> for the school's performance. Mm. Mm-hmm. As the performance continues, the temperature does not uh, improve. In fact, you can see that uh, zero degrees is getting really into the performance, maybe a little too into it. Mm-hmm. They seem to be a really precise dancer, factoring in a kind of like a, a street or contemporary style dance. There is at one point where they they incorporate a couple of like ice dancing style moves as well. But the more that they get into these incredibly precise, you hear the clicks of shoes or ice on stage um, as as they step exact perfect. But the more the dance continues, the colder it gets. A couple of the the diehard fans in the front row are actually already bundled up. They knew that this was coming. Oh uh, yeah, this to become a... <laughs> people know to bring <laughs> like parkas now. to these shows. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It is starting to become actively unpleasant at this point and shows no sign of stopping. (laughs) Yeah, so you've got the the diehard fans in the front row just like cheering their hearts out and rubbing their mitts together (laughs) just to keep warm while they enjoy the show. And the people kind of further back, some of them are not quite as diehard. They're they're still kind of like, hey, but also like rubbing their arms going like, oh, jeez. Fortunately, there is a, a merch stand that sells um, zero degrees brand uh, knitted jumpers and scarves that have like a blend between like the Christmas jumper style stitching of snowflakes, but it's in like synth wave colors. Oh my god, um, I want them! <laughs> those I are want one. those are selling like yeah. well, not like hotcakes, but they're they're selling very well. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're selling like hot cocoa. <laughs> Yes, they're selling like hot cocoa at a uh, at a ski resort, which seems to be increasingly the vibe that's going on. I think Angie's starting to like rub her upper arms a little bit as she's watching, um, but she's also watching where all the fans are because at this point she's starting to get a little concerned that everybody's so cold. Yeah, so I think that's where she's at right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's 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 kick this up a notch. Uh, you see somebody in the back row slump. Uh, they are now too cold, and a couple of people pick them up and uh, get them away from the main stage. Yeah, you see a couple of, <laughs> in addition to like the usual like super idle precautions of like barrier tech kind of around the area, you also have like <laughs> paramedics standing by who are prepared to treat uh, hypothermia. 
Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> if this continues, this could maybe get dangerous and he shows no sign yeah. of stopping. This number is really long. Why is this song so long? <laughs> yeah, it's, the it's song like, should be over already. Yeah, you kind of feel like the, the song like is starting to repeat itself, like it's maybe started over from the beginning, but he's, he's just so into it that it doesn't seem to matter that the, the hype just seems to keep on rising as the temperature keeps on lowering. Oh boy. All right. Um, I look at Alan and I say, this can't go on. Someone just, someone just, and she's pointing at the, uh, the person that's being carried off and there's paramedics, paramedics. And she's starting to get a little angry. Mm. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> as bulls oh. often do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, also, this is a little fresh for her, for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, her vision of an idol is one that does not hurt the audience, so she looks at Alan, and at this point, um, she does not know Alan is Queen Bee, right? Mm hmm Yep. That, so, she tries to pass Alan her bag, like, where, where her stationery is, and she's like, do you mind holding this for me? Uh, just, just, I disentangle my hands from the hoodie where I was trying to keep them warm and take the bag. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, I'll be, I'll be right back. And uh, she starts storming into the into the audience, and she's saying, "Hey, hey!" over and over, trying to get zero degrees' attention. On like the third, hey. Um, there is a small catch in the next step that he makes and doesn't hit his mark. He stops. The music stops. Oh, and the, the audience goes, ooh, because they, they, they don't like that. The, the reason that they like you so much is because you are so like laser perfect in everything that you do. Mm hmm. Um, there is a pause with his arms dramatically spread wide as part of the step. He doesn't <laughs> correct it. <laughs> um, you can see that he's breathing heavily, um, the sweat off his brow immediately crystallizing and turning into vapor. <sighs> oh, oh, sorry. Uh, and, uh, fans himself. I seem to have lost myself a little bit for a moment. Oh, I, I just get so, so enraptured. Uh, in in the music in the performances, but um, I I must say, uh, working for this new company, working for Crimson Signal, is doing absolute wonders for my focus lately. What can I say? You too can be an incredible dancer with laser focus by uh, tuning into the line of Crimson Signal brand products and seamlessly seamlessly transitions from <laughs> yes. that step era into a <laughs> into a company sales page. yeah and you get like a nice projection <laughs> on the back wall with the with their logo and just a like a powerpoint presentation of their their latest line of <laughs> idol themed equipment and merchandise with a series of dance instructor blu-rays hosted by yours truly seriously <laughs> oh excuse me I'm pretty sure that person over there could have died. Oh? He kind of like mock holds his hand over his eyes like he's scouting into the distance and sees uh, the collapsed person over there. Oh, well, this performance did come with a general attendance warning. Uh, there is a uh, splash zone, as it were. <laughs> yeah, lady, what are you talking about? We want to see zero degrees. Get out of here. You're holding up the show. And the, the audience is kind of like turning around and sort of berating you, trying to pressure you into backing up. Oh, audience, you don't need to be like that. This is just somebody who is yet to become a fan. He uh, snaps his fingers and summons a chair, which he then sits in uh, of ice. <laughs> and they, they sort of like, there's a rhubarb among them. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Zero Degrees. We, we shouldn't be so judgmental. We want to be more like you. In fact, in fact, uh, the second part of the show, I was going to invite two uh, lucky performers to do a group dance routine with me. She looks like she's athletic and can follow my steps. What do you say, everybody? Yeah! And there's like clapping around you and a chant starts to form like, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Zero degrees, smiles so wide. There are so many teeth. 
They are all immaculate. Okay, so at this point, when Zero Degrees sits down in their chair and they're talking about their next spiel for the second half of the show, Angie has her arms crossed and is just getting progressively angrier as this is going on. (laughs) Because is this guy serious right now? Um, So she says, fine. (laughs) After the chanting, the chanting is going on. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. Fists clenched in everything. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Amazing. Amazing. I love dancing with new performers. You learn so much by dancing with new people, which resonates with you for reasons that Zero Degrees is not aware of. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, I must say that it would be unfair for me to just summon a random member of the audience on stage to go up against someone of my caliber. It would be more fun if it was two on one, wouldn't you say? Do you have a duelist second, maybe? And she's looking around. (laughs) And she's like, uh... You didn't come to a mall with no friends, did you? No friends. No no friends. friends, No no friends. friends. (sighs) Uh, This is so mean, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's okay. It's okay. That was meaner than I was expecting it to be, but yes. (laughs) <laughs> um, well, you so do literally of... have a move called Cold and Cruel. <laughs> mm, yeah. Actually, shall we? Shall we? Shall we turn that into a move? Maybe. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think it would be appropriate since uh, <laughs> Zero Degrees is clearly trying to put some pressure on Angie to either like put up or shut up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so to... I just want oh, to. Sorry, I just want to check in with Luca for for a quick second. No, just to make sure. Yeah. This no, I was is about okay. to say too. <laughs> and. Uh, what I want Angie to do is to point at Alan and just because Alan's the only person that she knows around right now. <laughs> and that, that is okay. That is okay? Was, okay. Was kind like was trying to bring themselves to step up, so Yeah, yeah. like okay. before we continue with the scene actually, I want to get a little bit into Alan's head about this. Uh, Alan, how, how have you been feeling through this whole exchange that's been going on? Honestly, uh, I felt like Angie was going a bit too far because, like, it's like these people know what they're in for. It's a really good dancer. I've been like taking notes, and then Zero Degrees started being really mean and uncaring, mm. and that sales pitch was kind of gauche. <laughs> That's the word for it. <laughs> Incredibly gosh, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think could use to be taken down a notch or two. <laughs> All right. So, so Angie like kind of frantically like looks around for someone, anyone who she could invite up on stage, and really the only even kind of familiar face is Alan, so not really in a great state of mind to be thinking very clearly, just being very angry right now. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to GM say that you're probably angry enough to mark angry at this point. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, which thankfully should help your bowl moves if you need them. <laughs> <laughs> you point out to Alan in the crowd, like, them, fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Two contestants, well performers come on down and uh a kind of like a game show remix uh (laughs) kicks in uh as kind of like alternating light bulbs around the stage flash on and off yeah Um, and there's still like sponsored (laughs) images from crimson signal playing in the background up above Mm -hmm. yeah and uh angie is just looking a little apologetic at this point because she invited somebody who she, as far as she knows, is a civilian into this impulsively. She's like, oh my god, how am I going to get us out of here? But uh, she doesn't want to show zero degrees that, so she's stepping... I get you're inviting us up on the stage? Indeedy. Okay, yeah, that's where she's going. <laughs> and she, like, doesn't use the stairs, and she, like, jumps on there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> And uh, I know that you're not one to be very precious about your secret identity. Are you transforming for this? Uh, She's going to do a thing where she rolls her shoulders and cracks her knuckles. And then, yeah, she's going to punch the floor and transform. All right. 
So you get to do your transformation sequence. Uh, I know we've kind of done how it looks a couple times, so we don't have to unless you have a specific thing that you want to show off for this one. Uh, I don't think so. Just the usual stuff, some fireworks, and then poof, basically. <laughs> the new the new outfit is there. All right. So you get access to all your powers. You get to shift any two of your labels, and you add loose sync with your powers to the seven to nine options on take a powerful blow. Okay. Um, what does that last one mean? Sorry. Oh, that means like if you take a powerful blow, then uh, one of the options you would take if you rolled a seven to nine on it would be to lose sync with your powers and detransform. Got it. I'm going to put my danger up. Okay. And I guess I'll move superior down, and that's probably because uh, her mundane is already at minus two. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I'm going to go with is um, her ability to assess the situation is not going to. Yeah, I think that yeah. makes that makes sense because you're kind of seeing red right now. And also, yeah. like in the wake of everything from the weekend, like you're, you're feeling a little bit better after having your talk with Kyle, but you're still not feeling like the top dog in the situation for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And how about Alan? How are you approaching this? In a very, very self-conscious way climbs up the stairs with, like, eyes lower, trying not to look at the audience. Oh, boy. Stands uncomfortably to the side. Yeah, let, let's do this. Oh, don't look like that. You look like you've been defeated already. And that would be no challenge to me. But you're such a dick. You get the huge smile again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you get the audience going like, Boo! Don't call our idol a dick! You do realize that in this world of, uh, this is like in stage whisper, um, he like moves his mic out of the way. You do realize that in the world of performance, uh, there's been a bit of an overlap with other kinds of televised performing arts. How familiar are you with wrestling? Uh... It's fine, it's fine. I'm sure that you wouldn't be aware of other performing arts aside from the one you're doing now. Anyway, in wrestling, there are usually two types of performers. There are baby faces or faces who act as heroes and then there are heels and sometimes it's good to be bad They kind of stand up straight, they pose a hand in the air like an ice skater as ice crystals cover uh, both their legs up to almost kind of like thigh-high boot length and that then kind of like shatters away and instead of regular feet he now has two incredibly long ice spikes that he kind of balances on on point. Like a, like a ballet dancer. Another kind of goes along uh, his right arm and breaks away uh, to large, cruel-looking claws. And, you know, just to go to go all the way on this, a little ice tiara appears around their forehead. Uh, otherwise, their outfit is the yeah. same. I'm, but, I'm gonna say that you were, you were technically transformed before, but this is part of your powers to, like, add this to, <laughs> to your form. Mm -hmm. Cryokinesis is generally um, yeah. zero degrees stuff, so maybe this is just playing to the crowd at this For point. For sure. But yeah, yeah, because Angie just transformed. You're not going to let uh, her have all the fun with the the flashy light show going on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think the stage hands were, you know, because this is a show, we're playing up her transformation as well. So you got spotlight. They they changed the kind of color hue. Of the, of the lights to match your outfit upon your arrival, like this was all <laughs> supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, and they kind of get the vibe that, that Alan is like kind of uncomfortable on the stage, so they've just put like a very simple bear spotlight for now, <laughs> just mm -hmm. to sort of like, if they do anything, <laughs> maybe they can change that up as they go. Oh, mm. that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in your own time, darling, in your own time. But, since this is a dance competition and we value three things, audience, don't we? We value poise, poise! we value grace, grace, and we value perfection. Perfection! <laughs> um, and I will, uh, I would like to, to start this, I guess, combat off uh, to use uh, a single and only instance of wield your powers and adult move. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah, no, for this session we have allowed exactly one use of an adult move for your character, so when you wield your powers with precision or grace, roll plus freak. On a hit, choose one. On a ten plus, choose two. And we'll give mm -hmm. a, we'll get into the options once you've rolled. Okay, let's roll freak. Oh, oh no. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is a 13. <laughs> I guess it's two, two of these things. Uh, yes. Take hold of something vulnerable to you. Um, the stage on the floor turns into ice. As you notice, uh, really specific bare spots that are not covered in ice um, in a pattern across the entire stage. Uh, and an, an additional clone appears. There are now three ice clones. <laughs> Follow my steps. And if you don't, well, it would be embarrassing to fall over in front of all of these people, wouldn't it? <laughs> so when Zero reaches their final form, Angie does like a slow clap, <laughs> <laughs> but looks a little nervous when the ice stuff happens. But uh, she thinks back to all of her lessons with Kyle and stuff like that, and... She's just like, channel your inner Kyle, channel your inner Kyle, and she just puts her hands on her hips and says, let's do this. <laughs> very good, very good. Are you ready, player two? Yes. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still holding the stationary bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Poor well, Alan. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, gesturing. Uh, it seems your backup dancer isn't quite warmed up yet, but that's fine. Let's get into it, shall we? Hit it! And uh, music starts again. And uh, yeah, uh, zero degrees th starts doing like a simple box step. And you can see that their, that their little ice spiky legs are uh, landing perfectly within these bare patches on the ice. And after doing that for about four bars, they pause. And now you. Okay, so how does this work for for me? I'm gonna call this either directly engaging a threat or our special it's time for my solo move. I think it's probably, since it's not like the crescendo of, of your performance yet, I'm gonna call it a directly engage a threat. Okay. Because you're, well, you are engaging and they are a threat. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I was on, I'm, I'm on the same page. That makes, that makes sense to me. So I will... <laughs> Aha, <Ooh. how? laughs> so you got a 14 on that so on yeah. a 10 plus you get to pick two out of resist or avoid their blows take something from them create an opportunity for your allies or impress surprise or frighten i'm going to go with impress surprise or frighten mm -hmm. and uh take an oppor and get an opportunity for my allies all right so what does that look like for you She'll do, because this is a pretty phenomenal role, so um, <laughs> <laughs> she's going to do the box step effortlessly. Box step, she has been dancing ballet since she was three. This is nothing. <laughs> and uh, so she does it effortlessly, but then does a little something extra. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the animation budget bumps up a second time. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, does a, does a pose at the end. <laughs> and then raises an eyebrow. The only thing I'm trying to think of is how to make an opportunity for Alan. Oh, and maybe I, what if you... Oh, sorry, go ahead. You, you give no, your go ahead. Yours first. I was going to say maybe something to do yeah. with your fireworks, possibly. That's exactly what I was thinking. So we're on the same page. <laughs> okay. Where uh, when she does her final pose, it's just like really bright fireworks. <laughs> she wants all the attention on her. Ah, Yes. Ooh. Appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the audience is super into that. <laughs> I, I think the 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 fact that there's like oh going toe to toe is uh, uh, definitely a thing. Um, zero degrees is still smiling, but not smiling in the eyes anymore. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. oh, you've done this one before. Well, let's see and if your dance partner is able to keep up. All right. <laughs> so now, Alan. <laughs> Eyes firmly closed to avoid looking at the audience. Alan tries. All right, so get to, you get to directly engage the threat as well. Okay. And how does that uh, create an opportunity work? Sorry. Oh yes, uh, we'll give you a plus one on this if you put that in the modifier. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, okay, I'll add situational bonus one. Yep. And oof. Oh, just barely. You needed that plus one. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a seven on that. 
So you get it's, to pick one from the list. I think it's uh, it's a good idea to impress. All it, right. Because <laughs> it didn't look like I could do any of that. All right. So yeah, no, t- give us a slice of that. What is your what is your box step look like with your eyes closed? It look it's extremely precise, almost mechanic, but very fast and very good. And at the end, I almost sleep on the ice, but I recover. Very good. <laughs> and the audience is like super impressed as well because they that was for sure what they were go- or what you were going for. They didn't expect that out of you, and they're going wild like, whoa! Look at them go! That is astounding precision. Yeah, Zero and the- degrees marks angry. <laughs> <laughs> and the the tech people uh, correspondingly brighten Alan's spotlight. Uh, I will say though, since neither of you marked uh, resist or avoid their blows, um, I am going to have the both of you mark conditions because you've got some adrenaline flowing and you're not sure how the situation is going to resolve. So I'm going to have you both mark insecure. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah. <sighs> Oh, okay. And uh, taking taking a big stretch. Let's kick this up a notch, shall we? And I think this time there is this, this dance move uh, goes. Let's do some Vogue Femme, yeah. shall we? Yeah, uh, we get we get some handwork, and then it dips into kind of like floor work. Lots of leg legs kicking in the air. Um, uh, and this is a direct appeal to the crowd, uh, ending in the kind of like r- uh, a spin and dip, one leg sticking up in the air, uh, and the audience hopefully loves it. I would like to use time for the show. Sure. Uh, when you put on a flamboyant display of your powers, roll superior. Definitely. Um, oh, sorry, I should probably ask, what was the powers component of that again? Oh, um, I, I see what you mean in terms of I have to kind of el- elaborate specifically within the realms of... Um, uh, yeah, of the, uh, we of can the have... move, it's specifically a display of your powers and not necessarily of your ability, your dance abilities. Yes, I have my three ice puppets. Yes, um, perfect. So they, they are working in unison. Um, it's probably a feat to control one clone of yourself with pinpoint accuracy and trying to do three uh, is maybe uh, starting to move into silly territory. You wonder how how long uh, Zero Degrees might be able to maintain that for. All Um, right. (laughs) So yes, you definitely get to real superior on this. Mm Mm-hmm. Ooh, we continue to have real numbers. (laughs) Oh boy. So that is a 10. (laughs) On a 10 Mm -hmm. plus, you get to name two NPCs present. The named NPCs must either volunteer help or information, express admiration, or ask for your help. GM's choice. Uh, Mm Ah, what would make sense here? Uh, First, tell me what the NPCs are, and that will probably influence my choice. Uh, There is an Instagram superstar in the audience, Papaya. Uh, just papaya, no Ooh. surname. Oh, Idlegram, um, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it's Idlegram. It's Idlegram. Idlegram. <laughs> cool, 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 yeah. cool, cool. <laughs> sure, sure. It's Tridstagram in, in the talent agency, so, you <laughs> know, I was kind of like, I can't name the, the product in the other thing, that makes no sense. Yes, yeah. uh, Just Papaya uh, appears, is apparently present in the audience. Uh, she is one for causing um, a scene just in general, because she likes, you know, uh, being in a cool uh, environment such as this, but also being able to draw attention to herself is something that she's a fan of. Uh, and there is uh, in the stage crew, uh, Kyoto Joe, who is like one of the one of the stage hands um, and like the co choreographer when Zero Degrees is practicing, um, okay. always performs alongside Kyoto Joe. Okay. Uh, and let me see. Do you get help or <laughs> probably some kind of help? <laughs> this see. could um, be bad for zero degrees too. That's also entirely yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say probably uh, Papaya is going to. She's already had her phone out this whole time on a like a selfie stick like above the crowd so that she can get the best possible angles. Um, and now she's sort of like rallying the crowd around her like. We can turn up the heat on this, or no, we can turn up the cold on this. Yes, exactly. Um, and she's turning on the like the the light function of the phone, like the flashlight function. Uh, and mm-hmm. now there's a the, there's lights starting to flare up from the audience of all these individual pinpoint lights from people's cell phones, creating kind of like a disco light effect on the stage. 
Ooh, and it's reflecting in the ice clones and is yeah, now yeah. just being a big nonsense. <laughs> yeah, and, and Kyoto Joe kind of like recognizes this from off stage uh, and signals for the, the lighting to emphasize this effect, turning this into basically a Technicolor disco wonderland. Mm hmm. I, I think this is either it's either or, or maybe both. It's like hard to concentrate, or it's probably harder to see whether non ice patches are with all of the, with the light <laughs> oh, show going sure. on. Um, and as you go, I'm going to say, like, because you're still, like, using your clones and whatnot, and it, this is still, like, a use of your powers, the ice is actually slowly starting to creep off the stage and into the, the seating area as well. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's getting bad, people. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, even the people in the splash zone are starting to, like, back up a little bit, like, oh, hang on, hang, hang on. But they're still, like, cheering. We're still into this. <laughs> We're still kinda. into this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> don't stop. Mm-hmm. I don't suppose the two of you know how to vogue. Work for me, hunties, yes. <laughs> Angie's never vogued before, but uh, she's not one to take a challenge lying down. I think I'm going to try the the dance moves again. Okay. So that would be another directly engage. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Okay, that's a hit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to just pick one from that list then. Okay. This time I'm going to defend the defend myself from the blows because I can see all this other stuff going on and it's a bit distracting. So I'm also in self-preservation mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you manage to, like, do the move okay and, like, make sure that you're focusing on it well enough, but, like, because you're kind of in your own head about it, it's not quite as impressive as your last move. Like, not, like, yeah, you, you're not getting booed or anything, but you're not getting, like, cheers of excitement either. Yeah. Uh, and how about for Alan? Alan is... Alan knows how to fog, loves fogging. Oh! Um, is uh, a little pissed at this point, so they're gonna try and get in... Uh, Zero degrees face and provoke him. Yeah, yes. let's do it. <laughs> Come at me, bruh. <laughs> what does this look like? Just I get close and poke straight in the face, daring them to respond. For sure, this is like this is the language of dance. We'll say this is how you're provoking someone with your words. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead and roll superior on that. Uh, yeah, I really wish I hadn't lowered that. <laughs> Yo, oh, oh, nice. you still got an 11. Yes. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so for PCs, if they do what you want, uh, you add a team to the pool. Uh, if they don't do it, they mark a condition. <laughs> I want, when I do the last move and I get really close, I want you to flinch. Ooh. Ooh. I would like to, because, I don't know, I have a reputation of never playing any RPG correctly. May I do both of those things? Can I do a, what they want and also take a condition? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The last two actions that you do, you go for like a, a flick of the wrist that is just millimeters away uh, from Zero Degrees' nose. Oh, I should also say, by the way, I probably should have done this at the start of the encounter. This technically counts as entering battle against a dangerous foe as a team, so I'm adding two additional team to the pool, and we can add Ooh. more depending on the following options. Okay. Um, if the leader has influence over every teammate, nope. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone has the same purpose in the fight, add another team. Do you think you have the same purpose here? I think my intention going into the fight was making sure that nobody else was getting hurt. All right. And Alan, yeah. is it the same, or are you just kind of like trying to <laughs> stay at, keep so your head above water? In, yeah, no, I, it's either support Angie and also show up this jerk. Okay, so it's not quite the same uh, in that case, so we wouldn't get that team. If any team member mistrusts the leader of the team, remove a team. So I think in this case, Angie would be the leader. Uh, Alan, do you mistrust Angie? Oh no, she kicks ass. All right, so we're good there. <laughs> and if the team is ill-prepared or off-balance, remove a team. I would say yes. <laughs> yes, all okay, right. So that, based on what I've just added, uh, that leaves you with a total of, I think, three team. Nice. Um, yeah, that with that last kind of like flick of the wrist in your routine, millimeters from zero degrees' nose, and you see like 
proper, like, their pupils shrink in that kind of, like, anime outrage expression <laughs> as they as they lean back a little bit and I mark insecure. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, this is so much fun, but I have been practicing longer than you've been even alive for. Let's bring this to the big finale, shall we? And um, I would like to unleash my powers because I've already wielded my powers. All right. Um, all of the ice clones start doing routines simultaneously. They like form a ring. So it's four people, like one human and four clones form like a ring around you two and start doing um, big elegant ballet moves. But we've got pointy, pointy feet and a claw hand. So uh, it becomes things that you might need to dodge. Otherwise it might hurt. All right. So you get to roll your plus freak on that. Mm-hmm. Just a hit. All right. So on a seven to nine, uh, you either mark a condition or the GM will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. Um, I guess you probably get to choose which one you want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to mark afraid. All right. As this uh, onslaught begins, there's kind of like a brief bit of slow-mo and we get like the thoughts of, uh, of zero degrees being like, am I taking this too far? I... No, it's what it's what the company wants. I am supposed to be the heel. I'm going to be the heel. I'm going to be the heel. And you imagine like a, a cabal of shadowy faces in your mind's eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and but you know, in the space, all that could be heard is essentially the kind of like I, I'm imagining the sound of like ice in a slushy machine. It's kind of a grinding sound at this point. As uh, multiple ice clones are just kind of whizzing around you all, thrashing about. All right. Oh, gosh. Um, I feel like Angie would probably try to protect Alan because she doesn't want another Karen situation. Mm-hmm. I All think right. that's where that's where she's at. Cool. So that would definitely be defend someone. So you get to roll savior. Okay. Alan uh, would probably just realize that they don't have their powers on and just desperately try to dodge. All right. So I think that would... Hmm. <laughs> I think we'll see how the defend goes, and we'll see how that goes after. Here we go. It's a hit. All right, so on a seven to nine, it costs you. You expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Yeah, so you get to choose either add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. Um, I'm going to choose clear a condition. <laughs> okay, what are you clearing? I'm going to clear uh, angry. All right, cool. So you lose your, your bowl bonus, but you, uh, that makes sense for the what's going on in the situation. You're more interested in protecting Alan than in staying angry at zero degrees. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you could say that she's learned a little bit about <laughs> what happened last time. Character growth. You love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but you did, you did definitely expose yourself to danger. Uh, so I'm gonna say, uh, what, what's gonna happen here is you, you manage to get in front, uh, like, between Alan and one of the clones coming towards them, and you manage to sort of protect them okay with sort of, like, your bomber jacket is kind of thick enough that you, you can fend off whatever hits they've got, uh, but you're not keeping great track of the patches of ice versus floor below you, mm -hmm. so you are going to take a big hard slip and you're gonna go like sliding like directly off the stage and into the crowd oh dear i am not gonna give you a condition but that does put you at a disadvantageous position let's say you definitely notice from down there that the ice is getting quite far from off stage yeah now. the ice is starting to grow out into the seating area and into it's starting to encroach on the the storefronts around it as well there's a fountain that's just frozen now yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah so alan you don't have to dodge but you were you were successfully protected uh is there anything else that you're doing currently in this moment to deal with the rest of the clones i can't think of anything i think i'm a little paralyzed see now angie's out of commission <laughs> oh does this mean that i win you're not giving up don't give up don't give up I guess I'm provoking you. Um, yeah, that sounds <laughs> yeah. like it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if your friend has stepped you're, away. You're either provoking or you're using your cold and cruel move. 
Ooh, hmm. Mm. Whichever one you think would give you a better benefit. I'm all superior either way. Ooh, Cold and Cruel has the potential for things going more deliciously wrong if I roll low, so let's <laughs> do that. All right. <laughs> Love to put myself in danger. Cool. Okay, cold and cruel. <laughs> right. So when you shut someone down, roll plus superior. On a 10 plus, you either inflict a condition on them, make them lose influence over you, or take influence over them. On a 7 to 9, you either inflict a condition on each or on the other, or both lose influence over each other, your choice. On a miss, they gain influence over you. Mm-hmm. It's a miss! Ooh. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, Hell yeah. That's a six. <laughs> You're not going to give up, are you? I'm still dancing, even if your partner has decided to leave the stage. This is your time to shine. You don't have anybody upstaging you aside from me. <laughs> oh, please. What's that? That's just some dime store bad guy act. You want to see a heel? I'll show you a heel. Hmm. Alan's going to transform. Yes! Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I'm so going to hard. add um, Alan slash Queen B to Zero Degrees' as influences. Okay. So please describe your... I don't know if we've seen your transformation sequence in detail, necessarily. Oh, so. no. I've been... I have never transformed on camera so before. Yeah. So mm. this... I should say this stage show isn't being recorded, it's but you're... It's not being recorded, and I, I expect more, a good amount of the... Like, how much audience is there? I think it's probably diehard fans at this point. Yeah, <laughs> like actually like, a lot no. of the crowd has kind of like started to like disperse at this point just because the ice has spread yeah. so far. So really there's only a small group of diehards around you at this point. Okay, I, I think I can do that. I had the hood over my head to keep warm, so probably not, not many people have seen my face. Cool, so you begin your transformation. Tell us what it looks like. Alan tosses their head back as the bees made of energy swarm all around them in a spiral, lifting them up in the air. Then a golden glow starts emanating from the chest, spreading to the whole body. The baggy clothes dissolve in the light and leaving just a luminous silhouette dancing in the air, surrounded by the bees. Raise the hand to the skies and the strappy gold and black nail art appear in a flash of light. They lower the hands passing in front of the face, uh, a la Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction making the makeup and hair appear. Then a pirouette, arms wide as the jacket flares into existence, couple high kick to materialize the heels, then Queen Bee lands with Grace on the stage, ready to show you who's boss. Hell <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is so hype, oh my god. Um. <laughs> yeah, because you haven't seen Queen Bee on the show yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, this is all spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, and you get to shift any two of your labels. I'm gonna lower mundane, and I'm gonna raise danger. Perfect. So you stand resplendent in your black and gold glory, staring down the barrel of zero degrees with the most powerful smirk imaginable. Come on, Popsicle, show me what you got. Zero degrees does a freeze of the dance step that they were currently in the middle of, and is like, Okay, fine. And their, like, demeanor and pose changes. It's much lower, uh, almost feral, as they kind of flex the fingers in their hand that is currently extended icy claws. Let's finish this in one dramatic blow, shall we? Oh, man. <laughs> and also, Angie, uh, do you see much from below the stage? How are you reacting to all this? Um, slack jawed. <laughs> That's the best I can say. Is uh, that um, there's a moment there where she's a little disoriented because she fell off the stage, and then she's just kind of grunting and getting trying to get herself back up, and then just in time for her to see en enough to see Queen Bee turn into Queen Bee. <laughs> oh my! All right, so, so yeah, slack jawed. <laughs> yeah, so. so Zero degrees, you're you're bearing down on Queen Bee at this point. Uh, I would say that most certainly is a, a directly gauge a threat at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which one of us is rolling that? Uh, oh. oh, good question. Actually, since, <laughs> since you're a PC, that might make um, sense for zero degrees to roll that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're the one who is actively engaging currently. <laughs> 
True that. Um, my danger is minus one. Uh, zero degrees is actually bad at directly engaging threats, which I think is very perfect <laughs> for this scenario. Um, okay. What? Cool. <laughs> How did you get up? <laughs> I'm dying. I'm, I'm actually dying. Oh my God. It's a minus one. It's a minus one, everybody. How did you manage I'm that? I've never saw a minus one before. How did you? Uh, how did you yeah, get a zero? I, well, I, yeah, I'm, I, I have the condition of. Um, oh, that's right. <laughs> Directly engage in a threat because oh, yeah. I'm afraid. That's so right. So you had a, a, minus, a minus three, three total modifier. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. So yeah, um, <laughs> zero degrees, crouch low, and then kind of dash towards. We've got a close up with speed lines. As zero degrees is yelling, "Poise, grace, perfection." <laughs> oh. Can I... How do you embarrass me? Please, please embarrass me. <laughs> okay, oh yes. You lunge at me and I just grab your wrist, flick around, and dip you. Like it's a tango. Oh. Holy shit! And then kick your legs from under you and let you fall. <laughs> In the uh, moment that there's the hold, a bunch of like rose petals made of ice flutter across the screen. <laughs> as as uh, as zero degrees goes, oh shit! And then you drop him, and he hits the ground. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna have zero degrees mark hopeless. Absolutely. Oh no! <laughs> you are one condition away from being out. Yeah. Well, almost. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. two conditions technically it has to be six. Ah, uh, if I try and take damage again while maxed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amazing. So as as zero degrees goes down, there's gas from the remaining diehards. The people who have left are kind of like scattered kind of around the edges, like they can get through the, the safety barriers around there. The people like the paramedics and whatnot have let people out. Um, but because like the ice is spreading so quickly and because they had to let people out through the barriers, the ice is starting to spread even beyond the bounds of the safety barriers um, and is definitely getting into surrounding stores and whatnot now. <laughs> Uh, zero degrees at this point is not currently dancing, but the ice is still spreading. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah, this is, the ice is starting to spread like much faster now, and it seems to be like getting kind of out of control and starting to climb like walls and such now. No, this crimson signal tech was supposed to be perfect. It was supposed to take me one step beyond. Work, damn you! Yeah, there's like frantic movements from the techies backstage trying to get like something working again. Like, but the the their stuff doesn't really extend beyond the boundaries of the performance area. Yeah, um, I think at least one of the ice clones shatters on the impact of uh, zero degrees hitting the floor. Uh, This is very not perfect. Um, (laughs) They slowly drag themselves to their feet. Um, They haven't really described their hair much. Um, they oh I described it as kind of like non-threatening boy band hair yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's fallen in front of their eyes so you can't see his face as he kind of like stands up again uh, shoulders slumped forward this is no longer perfect it never was oh yeah and your audience is starting to actually look kind of pissed because this is not what they expect of you hmm I, I don't I don't think uh, Kelvin Wyatt the person is uh, capable of hitting a teenager uh, so he doesn't do that but um, <laughs> he drops persona for a moment he looks up slightly and you get a peek of his eye through the bang of hair staring directly at you Queen Bee get the fuck off my stage this is over I would like to use, uh, try and use uh, provoke someone, uh, which is the only thing I don't have a penalty to, (laughs) to try and save face (laughs) and end this performance. I think it makes sense even regardless. (laughs) All right, so you get to roll plus superior, which you're still doing pretty well in stat wise. Mm -hmm. I don't have a negative modifier to it, so maybe we'll, it's a hit. (laughs) Yeah. So you got a nine on that. So for PCs, same sort of deal as before. You get to choose one of these two. You can either choose if they do what you want, add a team to the... Well, <laughs> your team is you and your clones, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. 
And if they don't do it, mark a condition. The latter might be more fitting considering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't get off the stage immediately, please mark guilty. Yeah, I'm marking guilty. All right. <laughs> Your stage? The stage is of the person who can keep it. Angie says, I agree, and she vaults back on the stage. <laughs> I think I'd like to do time for my solo. Yeah. <laughs> so for our custom, it's time for my solo move. Whenever you put your heart into a performance or impassioned speech with the intent to evoke a specific reaction in one or more people, roll plus savior. You cannot use this move again until a new scene starts. And we'll go into the options depending on what you get. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to roll savior. Hopefully it works. Been pretty lucky with rolls today. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Um, so, on a miss... Unfortunately, you bomb. You have to mark two conditions and your audience may start spreading the word about your screw up. Any enemies in your audience are unfazed and continue doing whatever they were doing before. Oh my god. So, please describe how this goes. <laughs> uh yeah, so basically what happens is she says, "I agree," and she jumps on the stage, but there's so much ice everywhere that she just wipes out embarrassingly. <laughs> oh, and it's no. the kind of thing where she tries to save it and like does like, you know, the break dance move where you like throw your scissor, your legs up in the air and spin around and go back on your feet. Yeah, she tries that, but it's just a disaster. <laughs> Oof. And at yeah. this point, um, Papaya in the audience, uh, she had like got stopped recording before because she had to deal with the ice. So conveniently missed um, Queen Bee's transformation on her phone. Um, but <laughs> she's gotten her phone back together and is now recording uh, and has recorded your slip and fall for the glory of Idlegram. Uh, I guess <laughs> this is my hashtag legacy. wipeout. <laughs> Uh, upon you hitting the floor, um, there's actually an immediate flash of concern in Zero Degrees' face. He was supposed to be humiliated, but not injured, and falling, slipping on the ice can actually be really dangerous. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, he kind of um, has a moment of clarity, and I am happy to roll for this. But in having now dropped kind of performance persona, he's like, oh my god, and he snaps his fingers, and all the ice shatters in the space, uh, which may or may not be a very dangerous thing to do, oh, uh, no. considering, you know, ice shards might go everywhere, but hopefully oh, if this sure. goes right, if this goes right, it will just clear the ice and not impale people. All um, right. So before you, before you roll this, I'm just going to, uh, have, uh, T, you need to mark your two conditions. Which ones are you picking? Probably hopeless and right. guilty. And that's where she's, that's where she's at. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. <laughs> and I am actually going to change it from guilty to afraid. Because if anybody saw that, it's... Yeah, so her fear is not so much of zero degrees. It's more of anyone who would be watching with a cell phone. Ah. Like, she's a teenager in the cell phone era. Right. And we've been recorded doing embarrassing stuff before. So she's... Like, oh god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, oh god. Um, we try and shatter ice, which I guess is an unleash your powers. It definitely in is. <laughs> uh, freak, but I have negative modifiers. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. Wow. Still a full hit. <laughs> wow. Okay. Still a full hit. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to reshape your environment however you want. <laughs> hmm. Uh, upon you hitting the ground, zero degrees, uh, jumps in alarm, like, oh my god, and snaps their fingers, and it, there's like a couple frames of hit stop where like the animation just stops entirely, and then suddenly there's a big flash of, of light as all of the ice in the space simultaneously evaporates into powder snow as uh, he rushes over to you and uh, kind of checks, like, you know, the back of your head and neck. Oh, you're right. Uh, can I can I get an EMT here? Can we, we we have we have stage crew, right? Yeah, yeah. You have the one of the paramedics rushing from the back of the area up to where Angie is. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, sit up, sit up. Are you okay? Yeah, and she sits up okay. It's more like I think we mentioned before in the canon. It's a little harder to hurt someone with powers. Yeah, right? so you're more or less fine, but it's always 
Yeah. <laughs> it's good to check it's in. It's all anyway. just mortification. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I think uh, she does take the help and she sits up. But when she sits up, she just has a beeline sight line of <laughs> papaya recording the whole thing on her <laughs> phone. <laughs> and she just flops over backwards again. <laughs> Okay. My life is over. Who? Mm, mm. <laughs> I, I I think there is a a small cut in and similar uh, of zero degrees of thoughts of like be the heel, be the heel, and then it was like there's no point. The show's over, and zero degrees sighs again, but warm this time. Gets up, stands up, uh, steps off the stage, and uh, walks towards uh, Papaya. Papaya, darling. Having the voice uh, accent kind of kicked back in again. You've come to this show as well. Thank you so much for coming. I, yes, yes, of course. I, I always try to make it. And, and she certainly seems unsure at this point because she has never seen you falter this badly and is really unsure of like what, how to react to all this other than keep filming. Mm. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, I, uh, I have a, a special offer for you if you're interested. Uh, sure, yeah, absolutely. It's something for for me or for all of my lovely followers. And she she turns the phone back around briefly to get like a nice like selfie grin and a peace sign, <laughs> and then turns it back uh, around to you. Yeah, well, and zero degrees like leans in real close, like ear whispering distance, gracefully putting a finger over the camera of the phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, how about you have a one on one tour? of Crimson Signal Studios with me in exchange for um, deleting a piece of footage. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, and this is someone from your audience. So let me just mm-hmm. make sure that you're... Uh, let's see how your moves affect that. Yeah, so when you let's seek help goes. from your audience, uh, you roll superior, and on a hit, someone from your audience can hook you up. Right. Well, here's hoping it's a hit. Rip. Oh. <laughs> it's a six. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no team, so uh, yeah, that just uh, she she declines the offer, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, she actually like she thinks about it for a sec and then frowns uh, and says, "It's unfortunate. I was just invited the other day for a tour by Crimson Signal themselves, and she gives you kind of like a surprisingly menacing look. I think they're not going to be very happy with what they've seen today." This beat, the kind of like performer expression drops for a second and then comes back again. Oh, that's so, that's, that's too bad. Ah, how unfortunate. But still, I'm so glad you get to have a tour of the studios. You'll get to see me recording my new single. There's a new choreography routine. Healy's are involved. Anyway. Yes, of course. Um, don't worry, darling. Only the most flattering footage will go out, but it's certainly not for anything that you've done today. Yes, well, that's too bad. Uh, have have a fantastic afternoon, and please do enjoy the Paradise Shopping Center. Yeah, and she kind of like t- turns on her heel and leaves at that point. Zero degrees goes back over uh, to Evangeline. I tried. <laughs> at this point, she's getting on her feet and kind of brushing off stray dust off of her uh, superhero outfit. And she's like, oh, well, it's the story of my life at this point. That's showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how's Queen Bee taking all of this back <laughs> on the stage there? Arms crossed, walking slowly towards uh, Kelvin and Angie. Well, that was surprisingly decent of you. I mean, you failed, but can appreciate the effort. Uh... I guess because uh, at this point, I suppose in the panic, there's probably a de-transform. Stats-wise, it doesn't matter very much. My stats didn't change. Um, But uh, Kelvin, uh, I guess, addresses you. I was going to say that actually you have astounding precision and you should look into doing more informed, more advanced forms of choreography. But uh, with that snide jab, I'm just going to say good game and go and make sure that the rest of my crew are okay. Mm. Out of curiosity, just because you have de-transformed, how does uh, Kelvin's untransformed uh, look different from his regular transformation? Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's a businessman suit. It's a, a couture in a... Deep steel blue, but with ice blue lining on the inside. No tie, top three buttons undone. <laughs> Very good. 
good. And any differences in like face or hair or anything? No, I think their face and their hair stay stay roughly the same. I kind of pictured them as like a mixed race uh, Turkish Czech. So their their hair probably goes a couple shades darker. Uh, you know, uh, the nineties for some reason are back in fashion, and everybody's interested in frosted tips. But that's not yeah. that's not that's not for him personally. Um, yeah, the super so, idol era is very flashy, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, the that that kind of like a uh, ostentatious hair coloring goes, but their their face their face style and everything remains the same. All right. Yeah, uh, this this was interesting. I hope to see more of your dancing performances. And uh, remember, he says, dropping back into voice again, three things, poise, elegance, perfection. Have a good afternoon now. <laughs> and Kyoto Joe comes out to, to meet you and make sure that you're okay <laughs> And kind of like fawns over you a little bit, like oh my god, just make sure that your your hair is looking okay and you're not you haven't broken. I any need bones. a drink so badly. Absolutely, <laughs> he's got like two tumblers ready for you. Mm-hmm. One's full of water, the other's just vodka. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Kelvin Wyatt exits the scene. Yeah. And as uh, everybody, like the the techs are kind of like dismantling all the stuff in the area the emts are making sure nobody is like got hypothermia or been injured on the ice uh that leaves you two standing alone on the stage um with the diehards kind of starting to disperse as well what are you going to do so would you like me to go get that phone At first, Angie probably had, like, this whole speech, like, you know, you don't have to worry, I'm not going to tell anyone. But then when uh, Queen Bee asks that question, she just narrows her eyes and says, yes. (laughs) (laughs) So you can see that Papaya has not quite left the area yet. You can see she's talking to, like, some of the other fans out in the out in the area near the bookstore kind of further back. Okay. Are there enough uh, surfaces for me to, like, run on a wall over there? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. You could run along the front display of the the Phoenix Fire Records music store, so the next door. Perfect. I run really fast. I land in front of her with a flip and say, Hi, Papaya, right? Oh, yes. Oh, oh you were, um, magnificent today, I must say. I, I do believe. Uh... Have you heard of Crimson Signal? We're we're a new group on the scene, but I think we'd be very interested in taking on someone of your talent level. Oh well, that is to be expected, but it's always nice to hear it. I will certainly consider you. Fabulous. But could I ask you just for a tiny, tiny favor? What can I do for you, darling? A little content exchange. Oh. Like uh you take a little something out of your phone and we put something else. Like, like selfie, personalized dance. Just name your price. Mm, what exactly do I want from you? Someone I barely know, but clearly has talent. I think... And she, she gives you a little smile. I meant what I said about Crimson Signal being interested in you. I don't know if you heard, but there's a tour of the Crimson Signal headquarters coming up fairly soon. And I would be most obliged to see you there coming up uh let's say this saturday hmm i will have to check with my people of course but i think i can make it absolutely uh definitely you'll need to uh exchange your number so let's do that real quick we can do that while we're exchanging the content absolutely so and um, this is of course this is uh, for my personal use so i would be very obliged if you could erase it and make sure that it's actually raise it, so just not putting it into the into the bin and then taking it out. All right. So you, you sort of like watch as she does this to make sure that she's actually doing it. So she deletes the clip of Angie falling on her butt, um, and edits out and trims out a few like unflattering pieces from the rest of the performance, and then she sets up her phone to record you doing a move. Uh, and I think this is probably going to be like a, like a statement of intent. So I'm going to have you actually roll. It's time for my solo. Okay. Is there any chance I can call some bees? Oh sure, yeah. Like, <laughs> I think it'll take them a sec to get there, but there's probably going to be some in the area. I'll start calling them, and in the meantime, I'll just 
do a little small talk and ask if I if I she can send me the moment uh, where I dip Kelvin because I I want to keep that. Oh yes, and yeah, she sort of does the little trim and sets it going like airdropping to your phone. That's so good. Thank you so much, Papa. Yes, you you're as sweet as your namesake. I do try, and she gives you like a little like Southern Belle type smile. Okay, ready to record? Absolutely. And she's got her, like, selfie stick tripod thing set up so that the camera is steady. And now I'm going to have you roll plus savior for It's Time for My Solo. Okay, Let's see what I can do. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Oh, guys. Oh. I got no bees. Oh, yeah, you didn't get your bees, unfortunately. So, kittens... Just an FYI, there is a new idol in town. It's Queen Bee, and if you know what's good for you, you'll bow. Alright, and I'm gonna say you don't, since this is obviously just a recording, you're not gonna get a, a reaction right away. Um, but you are going to have to mark two conditions, uh, because you're not <laughs> yeah. sure exactly how this is going to be received. Yeah, that. That and Papaya out. certainly looks unfazed and in fact is still smirking to herself. I'm marking hopeless and I'm marking afraid. Wow, I got just one condition left. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty then. So you finish that up. Uh, you've managed to confirm that all the footage you don't want is gone and the footage you do want is on your phone. You finish that up with very much uncertainty in your heart as you head back to over to Angie. I just toss up my phone. There it is. All gone. She catches it, so good reflexes. And uh, she gives it back because she's like, I I trust you. Uh, thanks. I mean, we're teammates. And uh, I feel like I owe you for the way you put Sagittarius in their place. Well, I, I appreciate it. At least my dignity is spared f this time. And I'm going to say I'm going to be, I'm going to add um, Queen Bee to have influence over me. All right. Okay. Oh, I got a mark potential because I revealed my identity. Oh, yes. For any missed moves that y'all took during this session, you should add the corresponding amount of potential. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually just going to double check and make sure if any of these team moves apply right now. It's not exactly a triumphant celebration. Might be sharing a vulnerability or weakness, though, depending on what gets said. I would argue that Alan transforming in front of Angie would definitely be a vulnerability, but it's up to what you think, Luca. I think so. All right. So for your playbook, when you share a vulnerability or weakness with someone, you tell them a secret about who you really are, give them influence, and shift your mundane up and your mask's label down. So I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to keep this up longer, but that... Uh, uh, this is it. I I did transform. So yeah, my name's Alan. Nice to meet you. Uh, Angie D transforms as well. Uh, nice to meet you, Alan. And I'm going to since you just de transformed, I'm going to shift Alan's labels. I'm going to shift Savior up and Danger down. For Angie, oh, what makes sense here? I'm going to give Angie actually. Freak up and maybe superior down. Uh, do you prefer she or he or they? And she's asking Alan this just to. That's cause probably the, the first time someone asked Alan that. And they're, they're a bit conflicted. Like, uh, when I'm Queen B, it's she. But now, just like. Anything goes. They? Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. So, do we... Um, so, okay, like... so... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, who the hell is Crimson Whatever? <laughs> That's a good question. Like the... Like the popsicle guy said something about some <laughs> tech. Popsicle guy, um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like that sounded like his powers were being amplified. I didn't know people could do that. Yeah, I didn't know either. And they were like, 
super obsessed with like precision or whatever. Well, that's just a dancer thing. I mean, I'm not that that obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> not because you're good. You're good too. Thank you. You really helped me out back there. I just I got lucky. I took him by surprise. Yeah, but I know you. I know you risked something by doing that. So I just want to say I see you. Thank you. Um. Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, oh gosh! Oh, where did I put the bag? Oh my God! So backstage with Kelvin and Kyoto Joe and everybody else who's sort of like recouping after the session. Uh, once it becomes clear that, that Kelvin is okay um, and everything seems to be like at least like things are being cleaned up out there. Things are on the up and up as much as they can be. Uh, we find Calvin in just a corner of the backstage area by himself, just in front of like a mirror or something. And in the mirror behind him, you see a dark gray thick fog starting to form behind them. And out of the fog steps an imposing figure in a cloak that seems to be partially made out of this fog. <sighs> oh god, that was... that was a, a performance. But it's all good. I'm looking forward to going home, drawing a nice hot bath and... Huh? Huh? What? What? As you turn around, the figure flicks out from within their robe, something that flashes bright red and sticks to your chest. It looks like a red and black card that lands there and sticks there like a magnet. And there's an erratic yellow glow that pulses around Kelvin, sort of making him collapse. And the figure curls two pale fingers, beckoning Kelvin towards them. And you sort of hobble off after them into the fog and both of you disappear. And that's he's dead really. now. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I will say off podcast, he's not dead, but he certainly is in no, trouble. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. That, was so, that was so much that fun. That was great. I hope I was a worthy uh, villain of the week for y'all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, it's <laughs> such a dick. I loved it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best thing you can say about a villain. Yeah, once again, thank you, everyone, and uh, especially Nathan for, for guesting on the show. Um, it was really fun, really fun session. So hopefully we have a chance to work with you mm-hmm. again. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I... Not at all. Thank you so much for having me. This has been this has been dope. For sure. <laughs> we will definitely sell, save Kelvin from the fog dimension at some point. Yes. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I um, I I will be interested to see whether he comes back as an ally or like a mode version two, <laughs> even more mm. powered villain. Either would be absolutely delightful. So yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to return if you'll have Lovely. me. Lovely. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Tia Wind as Evangeline Blake, Luca as Queen Bee, Aaron Cerise as the GM, and special guest Nathan Blades as Zero Degrees. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Jordan Cuttlefish, Blake1995, Matthew F., and Icicle Prism. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. This episode also features the following Creative Commons tracks. The Full Moon Boys, Buns and Guns, and Tubular Turmoil Zone Act 1, by Farage, found at soundcloud.com slash F-I-R-A-G-E, and Right Now by Masks, found at soundcloud.com slash M45K5. 
All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from storyblocks.com, freesound.org, and the YouTube audio library. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload, or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. You can also support this podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. All Super Idols patrons get access to behind-the-scenes content like Session After Talk, as well as our Session Zeroes for all new player characters. VIP patrons get that as well as early Rough Cut episode releases, rotating shoutouts in our ending credits, and access to bonus episodes. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay Roll Dice, a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Today we're featuring our network partner, Goblets and Gays, a fantastically queer Pathfinder 2E podcast. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Have you ever wanted a podcast that tackles the hard questions? Like, why do wizards wear those pointy hats? Is it morally okay to burn your name into a table? Is there a difference between dead and never waking up? Well, if you've ever wanted to know the answers to any of these questions, then I have a podcast for you. We are Goblets and Gays, a bi-weekly Pathfinder 2E podcast. Join our cast of an angsty barbarian, a pyromaniac goblin, a girl whose family loved astrology a little too much, a cultist, and a hot topic reject as they journey to a lost city and try to keep a twink alive. Follow us all on your social media at Goblets and Gaze. Join our Discord as well, and we hope to see you out there. Goodbye.